Do you like wrestling? Do you ever watch no, wrestling? I don't, yeah, I, no. Nope. And the Rock said, whoa, 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 whoa. Because I'm still standing here, custom made, brother. Woo! And I mean custom made from the alligators to the only Cassini right here, Ric Flair. There's only one. We're not the kind of guys to say, we told you so, but we told you so. <laughs> yeah, no thank you from the Young Bucks. Watch Wrestling with Mike Wellman. You know who I am. What's up, gang? Welcome to Watch Wrestling with Mike Wellman, the podcast that breaks down the biggest stories in and out of the ring. I am your host. My name is Mike Wellman. Thank you for hitting that play button. It is good to be here as always. We appreciate you. This is episode 62 of Watch Wrestling with Mike Wellman. On this episode, AEW has some banned moves that we are going to be discussing. We are going to be going over the new mandates in AEW that were reported this week regarding some band moves and some moves that will now need approval. Also, Kota Ibushi is all elite, and he and Pac are the fifth members of each Blood and Guts team for next week's Dynamite, so we are going to talk about that. Also, Roman Reigns has gotten pinned, and the world is still going around the sun. So we're going to talk about the Money in the Bank match between the Usos and Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa, as well as the Tribal Court, where Roman Reigns went to Tribal Court. He almost gave up the lay of the Tribal Chief, but uh, he ended up taking out his cousins along with his other cousin and then got challenged by his cousin for a match at summer cousin so we'll talk about the summer slam card which is shaping up roman reigns versus jay uso is the main event ricochet and logan paul we're going to try to talk about that one and of course joining me as always is the consumer of creative combat he is wrestling fan chris the notorious krs what's up chris what's up mike it is good to be back we are here again to bleed for the fans and on the fans. Yes, because we are still allowed to bleed on the fans. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bleed on people. And we're still going to spill tequila on people. And especially children. I might take a child's water still. Who knows? Well, we'll only take drinks from the fans if they're diet. But Correct. Like, like uh, Matt or Nick Jackson. <laughs> Just trusting people to tell him that the drink is, in fact, diet. Now, tons of AEW rules that we got to get into. But, yes, we're here to bleed for the fans and, like I said, bleed on the fans, most importantly. So there is never not a lot going on in the world of pro wrestling. So we have a lot to get to on this episode. Uh, but first, that's right. We need you to be kind, like, and subscribe. Watch Wrestling with Mike Wellman. Folks, we are trying to get our subscriber numbers up, so be kind. Hit the subscribe button. You already know where to find this podcast because you already found this podcast, whether it was on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Rest in Peace, Stitcher. You can also find us on social media, currently at WWrestlingPod on Twitter. Seeking that heat on Twitter at W Wrestling Pod. Currently, might be on the threads or what have you. But we're also on Facebook. So we're on some meta platform. We see you, Facebook followers. You can also support the podcast on Patreon. We have three tiers up at the moment. Choose a tier that fits. We have the foundation tier, the click tier, and the gang affiliated tier. So consider supporting the podcast on Patreon and check out what the game's been missing. Be kind, like, and subscribe, and we won't have any problems.
That's right. You don't want yeah. zero problems. Correct. So give us all the zeros on your debit card. Nice. No. Yes. Check out our Patreon. We have some new content coming out on our Patreon next week. We are going back to promo school, folks. That's right. We have another edition of Promo School coming out. Patreon first for this edition of Promo School. Eventually going to have to pay for this content, people. But yes, in this edition of Promo School, we will be going back to the way back days of 2005 and reviewing Paul Heyman's infamous ECW One Night Stand promo where he nearly caused a riot with the Raw and SmackDown invaders. Made Edge do a spit take <laughs> and smoked a joint with Rob Van Dam. So, yes, that is what we have next up on Promo School. Patreon.com slash watch wrestling. Check out what the game's been missing. And, yeah, let's get into the show now. All right, so did you see this one? Wrestling fan Chris, AEW, per report from Fightful, Fightful Select, as well as PW Insider, confirming... AEW has notified the talent of a new list of banned moves and a much larger list of moves that now will require approval. And we're going to go through these moves, and we're really going to see what what it all means for the talent in AEW. It seems like there's going to be much more of a process to get a whole match worth of some of these moves approved. But it's- yes. Let's see. Let me pull up the Patreon yes. or the Fightful Select post and see. So it was a document that I guess was sent out to the talent. And the outright banned moves include unprotected chair shots to the head, shots to the back of the head, buckle bombs and blind moves backwards into the turnbuckle, fencing responses, unnatural position of your arms following a concussion, seizure cells, spitting, bleeding in the crowd, weapons or projectiles in the crowd, taking drinks or food from guests in the crowd, or physical contact with the crowd. Nothing with blood on it should be thrown into the crowd. You know, to be honest, the first thing when I read this was like, seeing these written down like this just makes you think like, you know, every single one of these happened at least once. Right? For for one, we can all think of one, but it's just crazy to see it all written down in a row like that. If someone didn't watch wrestling or like ever and read this list, they would go, Why would you need to ban these? Like this is ridiculous. Of course you can't do that. Oh, hold on a second. Let's of, go back into archives. Of course you can't throw bloody things into the crowd of people. <laughs> but uh. yes, um which we'll we'll go we'll get back to that, but I just want to get through the post here. The, the bigger list of things that are basically still permitted but require approval for apparently multiple reasons to be approved by medical the medical staff and the coaches assigned to the match. Um, some of the things here are spots and bumps on the ring apron and outside, table ladder chair spots in and out of the ring, any elevated spots outside of the barricades, Dives and ladder spots on the stage, around the arena, and other places outside the ring. So we're like defining areas of the ring here, and there. This is like a a, almost like a real sport where there's like different areas where you can and can't do stuff. All pile driver tombstone variations, sit down drivers, inverted poison hurricane ranas, and vertebrakers. High risk dives and top rope moves. Four fifty six thirty double moonsault. Um, shooting star press intentional bleeding needs to get approved any sort of not just bleeding throwing people into through or over the ring steps commentary table bell table or guardrails barricades and weapons like chairs pipes kendo sticks hammers ring bells bats chains title belts Thumbtacks, skewers, barbed wire, other sharp puncturing objects, powders, aerosol sprays, liquids, uh, throwing any weapons or objects or chairs, choking, strangling with hands or a weapon, or hanging spots. 
wonder if Brody King had to get that, uh, I believe, Instagram post approved. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> that hanging spot with the boss man. <laughs> Injury spots or angles, whether or not medical is involved or called to the ring. Any physicality in the crowd or crowd brawling. Any physicality involving referees, managers, extras, celebrities, or special guests. Wow. So that's, like I said, a much larger list of things that they have to get approved. So to me, just without going into any of these specific things, the first thing I'm thinking of is these guys are going to have to write down every spot they want to do in the match. Like they're the macho man at WrestleMania three against Steamboat and then go to Jerry Lynn or somebody with this giant list. Like they're going to have to know in advance every single, I mean, obviously they pretty much do, um, but you're going to have to articulate in advance to management every single spot that you want to do, like Brandon Cutler with the aerosol spray, you know? Yeah. Or you, the outcast with their green paint. Oh, man. Do you think that, like, I wonder, I'm sure they want them to be like, hey, we're going to go into the crowd. I'm going to do this move, and they're going to bleed. I'm sure they want that, but I wonder if they're just going to go, yeah, we're going to do something in the crowd, and we're going to bleed somehow. That's probably what the wrestlers would do, you know? Like, but they can't do that. They have to like specifically write it down, get it approved. Right. And yeah, so so just to go through the myriad of reasons why this this could have happened, right? So the first thing is, like I mentioned in the beginning, we can all think of stuff that was done that was banned, okay? So we could just go through there right now. Um, buckle bombs, right? Sting retirement in WWE with Seth Rollins. And yeah. just even if you watch Sting in the ring right now, just him running into the turnbuckle looks almost problematic. Um Blind moves backwards into the turnbuckle. That's basically just saying any move that does the same thing to somebody as a buckle bomb. Fencing responses. This was interesting because, you know, with the medical staff there, you know, you want them to be alert and to be paying attention to what's going on, you know, i.e. when somebody gets knocked out or concussed or injured or, you know, God forbid, paralyzed or anything like that. You want the medical staff to be uh, to know what to look for. And when you have guys faking a seizure or faking like they were just knocked stiff, you know, like in a UFC fight where someone's like having trouble breathing, a fencing response is what they call it, you know. Um, it, it, if the medical staff doesn't know that that is uh, part, of the, part of the fictional show, then they don't necessarily know how to respond. So you can have... I mean, at best, you could have confusion, right? Like in the Brian Danielson match where basically, to me, it looked like he broke his arm and f basically had a seizure to, to get the medical staff in so he could deliver that message to them, right? But it's just, it seems like it could go wrong a lot of different ways, you know? Plus, there could be legitimate confusion out there, right? If, if someone doesn't hear exactly what you said, you know, they could call for legitimate like a stretcher to get you out if you're Brian Danielson having a seizure. And then now you have to deal with this stretcher that you didn't call. I mean, this, like I said, this is like best case. Worst case is some, something like this happens and the medical staff would somehow think it's part of the show. So there's all these different ways that the situation can be confusing. And um, yeah, this is the first I've ever seen of specific rules in wrestling about selling things like a seizure. When the only time I could ever even say I've seen anybody do it was obviously Danielson at Forbidden Door. Yeah, they must have, the medical staff or someone must have been like, we could, you can never have people do that ever again. Like, this is so serious, especially with his history. Come on. Yeah, it's like, that's how funny that one was. Yeah. He did it I one mean, time. Super reasonable, though, right? Yeah, you, I think if you're going to fake something like that, <laughs> fake it. If you're going to try to sell something like that, someone should know beforehand that you're going to be doing that. That yeah. is fine with me. Yeah, and, and that's just as far as, like, practicality of the the medical staff being able to do their job you know like it's like mick foley at uh king of the ring right the, clearly there was the medical staff was not there was no hard rule uh, on you know if he went unconscious the match is over it's like well he went flying off the cage and you know a few times so mm -hmm. yeah so it's like you can't you don't, you don't know what like still watching that king of the ring match i don't know what part of it was fully? I mean, he'll, he's commented on it and rewatched the match a few times, so you know a few of the spots. But you don't know what is him being legitimately out of it, and what is him trying to sell, you know, being out of it. So, so yeah, so I could totally see why the medical staff component of this um, is is here. Then you have uh, spitting and bleeding in the cr so spitting a a on anybody like this could just be two guys in the ring. It seems like spitting is no longer allowed. 
Um, which, and again, seeing all these things written down like this makes me think, how often is every single spot like this kind of pre-approved and agreed upon by all parties, you know? Like every time a guy gets spit on, did the guy say backstage, hey, I want to spit on you for extra effect, and I don't want you to shoot on me when I do that? And of course not. There's guys just out here spitting on each other this whole now, time. Do- do you think that? Do you think that that is going to be a like a steadfast rule, or because you can kind of fake spitting? You know, you can kind of like pretend you spit at somebody. I wonder if that's going to be okay, or if just even the pretend spit is just get it out of there. Well, it just just thinking back, how many times I've seen some people get spit on? Um, you know, it was not every time. It's like like I said, hey, I'm gonna spit on you. Um, hope it's cool. It is pretty gross, so I, I get it. Well, it's I was it's just a way to you know transmit communicable diseases in the era of pandemics and whatnot true True so you have bleeding in the crowd which please why you know how many wrestling shows have we gone to where obviously there's no rule against this you know bleeding in the crowd and now there will be you know so bleeding in the crowd used to be allowed think about it that way I'm, i'm pretty sure that uh Tommy Dreamer wouldn't have a career if he couldn't bleed in the crowd, okay? Just the idea of you... I mean, remember that show we were at where I was trying to get my hoodie off the chair because I was worried about getting uh, Dr. Oh, yeah. Redacted... Or no, um, Mike Anthony's blood on my hoodie. I was like... And then the people didn't want to sit back down um, in the chairs that were used in the match with the bloody people. Yeah, yeah, they had to clean... The good thing they cleaned it up quick. That was true. That was pretty awful. I understand. Yeah, it's like when you see the blood right there on the floor, you're less inclined to be cool with... You know, some color when it's going to yeah, get right. on your on your Air Maxes, you know? Yeah. God, imagine, <laughs> uh, you get it on your hoodie and you, like, put the hoodie on. That's, like, one of my worst fears. I hate that. That sounds awful. Yeah. So, you know, go without saying bleeding. In, it's just funny. Like I said, you, it's it was allowed until it wasn't anymore. Yeah, it used to be illegal. Yeah, it used to be illegal. Yeah. No bleeding on children in the crowd. Uh, weapons or projectiles in the crowd. Again, come on. It's crazy to think about this. Um, really, the first thing I'm thinking is Brock Lesnar throwing that car door. Oh, yeah. A car door. Come on. It's crazy. Yeah, projectiles in the crowd. Yeah, should. That's another one. Should, probably should have been there this whole time. Jeez, I want to imagine. They tell you, you know, you're part of the show. Um, if the action comes your way in the crowd, well, it's like, what if a ladder comes my way? I think oh, we've even God. talked about that on the show. Like, you know, these ladders are almost hitting people. It's... I feel like I feel like a lot of these are like uh, there was no someone's like there was no rule against it. And then everyone is like, um, we didn't think you needed a rule against it, but you do. It's wrestling. You need a rule against it. Taking drinks or food from guests in the crowd and physical contact with the crowd. So no more. Now, like I said, Nick Jackson taking Diet Cokes. No more throwing your gum at uh, your chewed gum at the security ringside. And uh, physical contact with the crowd, so, you know, no, like, no motorboating, unfortunately, for certain people won't be able to motorboat ladies or (laughs) men in the crowd. Um, You know, probably won't be able to make out with people in the crowd. Jumping in the crowd and breaking your foot, no longer allowed. Um, What else do people do with the crowd? Just ripping up signs, I guess, you know, not going to be allowed anymore. Oh, man. Unless so, now they can use just plants. Now it can be. Yeah. Now it's going to be known when MJF rips up your sign. That guy was a plant. Remember when they used to take like someone's beer and then just use it and just like smash it in someone's head like yeah. a, like their opponent. Popcorn want, beer. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think it went a little too far with a certain MJF, right? When he splashed yes. tequila allegedly on a kid, and it's like. You know, you, you got to deal with that. So I didn't, I didn't want to be smirch MJF, but that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sure half of these rules are because of him. Let's not. Yeah. You know, for sure. I mean, he's the one pushing the envelope with this stuff more than anybody. Besides just irresponsible moments that happen sometimes. Like Okada with literally almost diving on a child as well. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, so the way I look at just this whole list of rules, it's so comprehensive. It's one thing if Tony Khan came out after Forbidden Door and said, okay, we're going to ban, like, five moves, okay? We're going to ban Buckle Bomb, um, you know, specifically that Tiger Driver 91, and it's just you guys are going too crazy, you know, whatever, no more, and no more blood in the crowd or no, and projectiles. But this is a very comprehensive list, so they're restructuring basically how they do things. So, um, and then just to get into now the moves that need to be approved – you know, 
sp- spots and bumps on the ring apron. So I'm not sure just with the sort of danger level of these. I mean, are they going to limit the amount? Are they going to say like, okay, Jungle Boy, you know, you guys just did this last week. You're not doing it again, right? Or or you're not like, or there's seven other spots that are too dangerous. You know, is it going to be almost like a an allowance of certain amount? Like you're not going to be able to do 10 Poison Ranas, you know, or whatever the case. It's fine. I'll just watch Masawa. It's fine. Uh, table ladder chair spots in and out of the ring. So... I mean, like I said, these guys is just giving everybody homework, it seems like, you know? So elevated spots, basically this is like on the on the stage, around the arena, other places outside the ring. So it's basically just again, it's almost like establishing categories here, right? Pile driver and tombstone variation. So this doesn't say just outside of the ring, you know? So a lot of, I mean, I, I guess they're going to have a lot more people, like I said, writing down all their moves, even the ones that aren't crazy, yeah, dangerous. Seemingly, I mean, a tombstone, I guess, is is da- relatively dangerous, but you know. What What do you think they're going to say when Sting's like, "I want to do a four fifty off of the stage onto a table"? Are they going to like, "Yo, okay, Sting"? That's actually a good thing to bring up because when these guys clearly did not have to get all of this stuff approved previously. So I'm sure Sting probably told people, okay, I'm going to jump off this ladder, but maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Would someone tell people no, if they knew this stuff was going to happen, you know, and all the stuff that we've seen already happen, like whether it's a Sammy Guevara, like ladder spot or, you know, like the MJF and Adam Cole, when MJF dives off the, off the top rope onto the outside on a table, and and Adam Cole just looks like he got hit with a, a, a house, just like, oh, <laughs> like all this stuff that we've seen, you know, yeah, I'm sure they've discussed it and maybe it was like, quote unquote, approved or not, but not every single one, you know, like not every single Canadian destroyer, right? And, and Hurricane Rana has been approved. So it's like, now are people going to, are people like Sting going to get told no? you know, by like whoever. So now are we going to be deprived of the second half of our sting ECW most extreme moments DVD? I think we are. Is he going to be able to finish and hit these spots before his career ends? We'll never know. It's pretty sad, but yeah, so that's a good point to bring up is the fact that maybe if these are articulated in advance, somebody might be reasonable and say, don't do that. You know, don't do that sting. Don't land on your face on a table. Well, I mean, even even remember when Sammy Guevara did that like uh, six thirty from the top to the outside of the table. I don't know, man. That doesn't seem like that's gonna get approved. That was scary. Yeah, and it's like there have been obviously a lot of near catastrophes, right? Like you know, Sammy landing on Sting. Obviously, they had the actual injury of Dante Martin, which we talked about before, um, with Penta and Ring of Honor. And there's just all these moments of like near misses. And like I said, the fact that this list is so comprehensive. It, it makes me think that it, it wasn't just MJF splashing a drink on a kid, right? It wasn't just the injuries, you know, to guys. I mean, it could have been any one of those things, but I feel like if it was just the MJF thing, they would be like, okay, no more stuff with the fans. And then with Dante, it would be like, okay, no more tape, no more of this crazy table stuff or whatever. But it's the fact that it's all of it just goes to show you that it was really an overhaul. Yep. So we do have some more stuff on here, though. Yeah, so now high-risk dives and top rope moves, 450, 630, double moonsault, shooting star press, any intentional bleeding. So we're not talking about, like, you know, like unintentional bleeding, I guess. You don't have to get approval for. If you want to just accidentally bleed, like Moxley when he gets too angry. thinking Moxley was bleeding just reading this list. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's, like, reading this, and he just starts, Ugh, his forehead just starts bleeding. Throwing people into the ring step. So that's another thing. Ring step stuff happens a lot. Almost every match. And then basically they list almost every single weapon. So you could just, like, it's not like some weapons you don't have to get approval for. It's every weapon, right? There's no title title belts, thumbtacks, skewers, aerosol sprays, and liquids. Yeah, so again... It's crazy that all this stuff was not so like you know you guys are people are just out there with what you think is something relatively safe to spray in somebody's face you don't know what it is it's like i got an idea i'm gonna spit antifreeze at you you cool with that sure sure why not 
Yeah, probably shouldn't be cool with that. That's pretty good. I'm not. I'm don't, don't saying that's ever happened, but it's just I know, I know. just the idea that it's like okay, you got some spray, you know, and nobody's checking it ahead of time. It could be bear spray, because you know. Not well, yeah, even but not even even if it's like, what if it doesn't get checked beforehand? I'm like, I'm allergic to like lavender or something, and I didn't know it was in there, and you didn't know, and then I'm like breaking out in hives or something, or I my throat closes up. You know, it's stuff like that too. Well, that would give your opponent an advantage and cause you to most likely lose the match. No, I would just roll them up from behind. So throwing of any weapons or objects, yeah. It's it's just crazy how, like, I, you would think if they're literally, they could have a stopwatch, and if you just watch a match, it's just like chick, 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 over and over again how many times some of this stuff happens that people are now going to have to get approved. I wonder if it'll affect any of the in-ring. Probably, I don't, probably not, but it could. I could see some people. Oh, it will. I'm sure it will. Because, again, some people are going to get told no. And not just because of a level of danger. They might say, okay, we're going to do, you know, a code red onto whatever, a ladder. And they're going to go, well, no, they're doing that in the match before yours. You know, now it's all going to be written down. So now it's going to be like, well, you can't do the same kendo stick spot that is happening two segments later. You know, you would think that that might be uh, kind of like a byproduct of this is. Yeah. repetitive doing the same spots you know i mean i don't that does happen but it's only happened a few like big times noticeably where the main angle is kind of copy carbon copy but yeah and then you know any physicality this was interesting any physicality involving managers extra celebrities and special guests it's like again you wouldn't think like that this would already be a rule like when people show up as celebrities the level of physicality they're going to get into is not approved or not approved you know yeah, that's wild. Referees, managers, extras. I mean, yeah, I guess. There are certain people, there are certain times where it's like, you know, whatever, if you're a manager, sometimes, you know, you might, especially if like if there's a spot and you're going to run into the ring, like, you know, you might take a bump. It's like a one bump spot. you kind of out there and you're like, okay, I might take two bumps. It's not that I only signed up for one bump. It's, you know, I'm going to be out there getting physical, right, as they say. But it's like, you know, now, now they're going to be like, no, you, you have to... The, f the funny thing is, is like extras and celebrities, you know? Like, know, so you have extras who, I mean, sometimes they're there to get thrown around by like Brock Lesnar in a, in like WWE, but maybe sometimes they're just there to be like a, I don't know, like driving like a, a literal extra. And now it's like, you, you didn't know what you were getting signed up for really. I mean, I wouldn't want to be if I was was an extra and I didn't know how to take bumps or anything like that. I would also I would not want to be thrown around. So, thank goodness it's a good rule to have. I think that would be more for like the celebrities. The extras are basically there to get thrown around. Right, good usually point. wrestlers. Yeah. It's just like you know when you're a celebrity, you might say, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this, but not this. You know, like I'm not a wrestler okay. and I want to have a career. I don't want to get blasted yeah. in the face with a. Not that celebrities do a ton, but you know, like Shaq. Shaq did a big bump spot with Cody. I know it's like, oh man, I forgot about that. And we saw Snoop in WWE. Snoop, people's elbow, Snoop. We need <laughs> you to do the people's elbow. It's like it wasn't approved. I can't do it. Oh yeah, that kind of stuff too. Yeah, you don't think about that. Oh yeah, the sort of impromptu nature of things of like, well, what about when you need to call an audible? How would you? How do you do that? I think. This is like in any job when they come out with some new rules. There's always those people in the crowd that immediately start poking holes. Well, what about this? Well, what when this happens? What am I supposed to do here? And they instantly yep. can think of 50 times where this new list of BS isn't going to be practical. And then the boss is going to have to be like, well, we're just going to work with it, you know. But I get, they are going to be finding people. So we'll see. We'll see who gets fined, you know. I mean, these, sometimes they can't even not say the F word a lot of the time, you know. So we'll see. But yeah, we definitely had to talk about that. A couple of rules on here we didn't get to. Like, apparently, it's going to be no longer allowed to fart in the general direction of Renee Paquette. If you do that, you're getting fined. I was waiting for that one. Yep. About if, time. Actually, if you fart in the general direction of Renee, then Moxley doesn't have to get permission to stab you with a fork. That's what <laughs> happens. Yes. Uh, apparently, you're not allowed to tell Dave Meltzer what RJ City ate for lunch. Very nice. It's not allowed anymore. Mm -hmm. Taz apparently is not allowed to say not for nothing ever again. He will be fined $50 and 
every time he says not for nothing. After one week, you could probably pay. You could pay Kenny Omega's salary with that. Yeah. What else we got here? Uh, like I said, no more motorboating the fans, splashing your drinks on children, throwing your chewed gum at event security. No more flicking boogers on Colt Cabana or saying he has a small wiener. Not allowed. Collision's going to be weird then. No, um, no more code reds uh, when there's 50 already on the, on the show scheduled. And uh, no more... No more uh, pulling the Glock out and spraying the pavement with people's brains, Arn Anderson. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much this changes the AEW product overall. All right, let's move on here. So we knew, you knew, everybody knew. Kota Ibushi is coming to AEW. We didn't get Kota Ibushi on Dynamite, but we got a video package. So this past week on Dynamite, we were waiting to hear who the fifth team member for each team, the Elite team and the Blackpool Combat Club team, who the fifth member would be. And uh, the show closing segment gave us this when Don Callis comes out to announce the fifth member of the Blackpool Combat Club team. He was trying to recruit Chris Jericho because of his time. They were in a faction with Bad News Allen up in Canada. He kicked out Christian Cage out of that territory, and then he formed a faction with Bad News Allen before he was in a faction with Kurgan. <laughs> Had six weeks of television, I heard, Don. 12 weeks of television for oh, Kurgan. I wrote 12 weeks of television for Kurgan. <laughs> John Tenta was there too. I wrote five weeks of television for Tenta. Golga. It's a parade of human oddities. <laughs> yes, Don Callis comes out. He's got the Don Callis family he's forming. And like I said, trying to recruit Chris Jericho from our best friendship in Canada. We're the best friends in Canada. But it wasn't Chris Jericho. Um, Callis comes out to announce the fifth member of their team and he starts insulting Kenny Omega and Omega. This draws out Kenny Omega because Don Callis goaded him to the ring. Um, with, in, I believe in the, in the movie Hobbs and Shaw, this move is called the Mick Jagger where you get your opponent to chase you. And then the backup comes. I just recently watched Hobbs and Shaw. So I know nice. that. So, yes, Callus gets Omega to come out to face him, and Omega gets attacked by Kanosuke Takeshita, John Moxley, and the returning Pack, who was revealed as the fifth member of the team of the Blackpool Combat Club. So now it's the Blackpool and Newcastle upon Tyne Combat Club. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so they beat up Kenny Omega, who's just out there by himself inexplicably and then they get him in a pretty bad spot here again another spot that would not be approved Kenny Omega's neck in the chair and they are about to obliterate him and uh, Omega says that they also have a fifth member and to look up at the screen where we get a video of none other than Kota Ibushi that's right Ibushi joining the elite team the golden elite for the Blood and Guts match on Dynamite this coming week in Boston. Wow. What a treat for the fans in Boston. Can't believe we're going to miss it. It is a treat. Also, Pac being the fifth member is also great. Yes, Pac uh, mentioned to Omega that he broke his nose. Kenneth, you broke my nose, Kenneth. Love it. So, yep, Pac is back. And Ibushi is here. So... Kenny Omega told us that it's going to be a story of, of love. A season of love. Like the movie Rent. That's right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it's not the summer of punk. It's the season of love, yes. <laughs> it's the season of golden love. So yeah, no, that's going to be a pretty crazy match, I think, for Dynamite coming up. Ibushi and, you know... Just give me some Ibushi dream matches in AEW. Just give me uh, Ibushi versus Kenny Omega. Just give me Ibushi versus 
Konosuke Takeshita. Just give me Ibushi versus Brian Danielson. Oh. Just give me Kota Ibushi versus CM Punk. That's all I want. Just, just give that to me, and and we'll we'll be fine. Yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> so yeah, excited for Ibushi in AEW as everyone is. And yeah, Pack is in the match as well. That's a pretty crazy match overall. It's as yeah, this is like Moxley must see, yeah. Claudio. I believe Wheeler Yuta is still in the match. Kanosuke. Pack. The Young Bucks. And of course Eddie Kingston is in the G one. And Brian Danielson is injured. So, yeah, we're getting Pac and Ibushi. So that was how the show ended on Dynamite. And uh, another thing in AEW that we have got to talk about here is this team of MJF and Adam Cole, which I I will admit I did not like the the pairing of these two. I thought it was – I really liked that first promo where MJF was, like, pouring his heart out about looking up to Adam Cole, but now he's better than Adam Cole. And then, you know, then they get paired up in this blind elimination tag team tournament, which these teams could have been a little bit more random if it really was a random team. They're pretty much like good guys and good guys and bad guys and bad guys. But, yeah, they ran this tag team tournament, MJF and Adam Cole, and this has been amazing, right? These guys, at first it was a little bit hokey, like, oh, they're on a tag team, so... You know, MJF's going to lay it on thick and try to get along. And at this point, he's laying it on so thick, I don't actually know what comes next. I mean, you would assume MJF is going to turn on Adam Cole, but I'm not so sure. I don't know either. He is very good. So, yeah, MJF is coming out here with the, like, it's like once MJF decides that he's not trying to destroy you, it's just such comedy all the time, right? Like with trying to be friends with Cody and Chris Jericho and all this stuff. And now he's doing it with Adam Cole. And uh, so they're hanging out being bros. MJF's trying to get Adam Cole to cheat on Britt Baker. Typical, right? With four women in the bathroom. And uh, uh, Adam Cole doesn't go for it. Then Adam Cole gets MJF to play video games. And MJF says he's never played a multiplayer game because you have to have friends for that. Oh, poor Max. Poor Satan. (laughs) <laughs> so so then uh yeah so they're they're hanging out they're working out at the gym and then just when they come out for the matches it's like Adam Cole does this thing where he's like waiting for the right moment in the song in the in his in his uh yep. intro and and now MJF is coming out here doing the air guitar underneath him oh my <laughs> god and then when Adam Cole gets in the ring when it's like you know doom 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 and he's like in the middle of the ring MJF is just sprinting laps around Adam Cole. So hilarious. I love it. I like think about that. I've thought about that so many times in the last couple minutes. He's just like, he's so into the Adam Cole, baby, and the boom. It's just the antithesis of, of MJF, right? Absolutely. It's, he's, a, he's, a, he's so good. So, yeah, so logic would tell you that this is not the MJF that we have come to know in AEW. So, inevitably, MJF would turn on Adam Cole just when he wins him over, turns on him, you know, to eliminate a potential challenger for his AEW title. But who knows? This is what I think they should do. This is what they do. And this is this could be an actual, I don't think it's going to happen, but this could be an actual MJF babyface turn because it almost is... Right with him doing the whole haha, yep. I- I'm I'm actually winning you over, and then you know you would think MJF's going to come back and do the stab Adam Cole in the back, whether it's in the finals of this match or in there if they get a tag team championship opportunity, MJF turns on him. But you could have MJF be the guy that actually he is as almost as gullible like he he kind of falls for his own gullibility, and he actually wants to be Adam Cole's friend and tag team partner. And then guess what happens? Guess who turns heel? Adam Cole, baby. Adam Cole turns on MJF. You could do that. Ah, that sounds pretty good. Because that but, would be the big like, oh, what? Because Adam Cole's a super baby face. MJF, super bad guy. So it would be a, it would be another shock. Like you know, just beats up, beats him on the sh- back of the shoulder when he's not looking or something when he turns around. 
I think the way that I'd want that to happen is if that happens, I need it to be like somehow Adam Cole's MJF's friend, and he's like, "Hey, let's have another title match," and MJF's like, "Fine," and if he finally gets it to him, and then somehow they do some sort of heel thing in that match, and then Adam Cole becomes the champ. That would be a serious turn right there. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. It's great so far. It is the, one of the best things, if not the best thing, on AEW. Is yeah. this? Uh, of course, it's MJF. He's he's the best in AEW. So. And, and- you were right when you said at the beginning too. I also didn't like it. I thought their match was good. I like how he didn't MJF didn't give him five more minutes. He the earlier promo too. I thought it was all very good. And they get together and I'm like, come on, what are we doing here? And then doesn't matter. One week into it, and I'm like, this is great. Yeah. So we'll see. I bet you would think eventually they're still going to have a match, whether it be all in or all out or the. Uh, I almost said. What what is the uh, oh Grand Slam show still happening this year? Oh yeah, yep. in New York City. So we'll see what they do with that, with just with the AEW title in general. Because if they really aren't going to wrestle, then you think MJF being the world champion, him and his new friend should have a, a bad guy to to face, right? Yep. Or a good guy if they are bad guys. So. So yes. Um, that was about all I wanted to make sure we got to with AEW. We will definitely be reviewing the Blood and Guts Dynamite. Uh, also with MJF and Adam Cole, they are in the tag team tournament, and they are going uh, into the finals. Oh, it's uh, Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia, who, yes, they wrestled on Dynamite. And during that match, I was thinking, like, if if Orange Cassidy and, and Darby Allin win – because they they've been a good tag team as well. Well, then you think they got to go in there against MJF and Adam Cole, and MJF's the world champion. I don't think he's losing, you know, just in a match against Darby Allen. So yeah. then, of course, who who can you have go into a match and lose more than Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy, two of the best guys on the roster, two of the most popular good guys, Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara, right? Yep. Which again, the ran- this is not a random. Neither of these teams are random. You know, these are actually good teams. But yes, we are getting Daniel Garcia, Sammy Guevara against Adam Cole, MJF in Boston, and then the winner is going to challenge FTR on an episode of Collision in Hartford. I'm telling you, there is no not going to be a better back to back couple of weeks for wrestling shows in the Northeast than Blood and Guts in Boston, and then Collision in Hartford. You know, it's pretty unbelievable. So yeah, crazy. All right, so let's switch gears and get into some WWE business. WWE is on fire right now. Did you know that, Chris? It's it's apparently very popular amongst the kids. Yeah, I've heard. No, I don't know if it's the kids. It's really just everybody. I mean, the their SmackDown ratings are killing it. Raw ratings are good. They they just had a sold out Madison Square Garden for SmackDown. Like every show is like the most watched Money in the Bank, the the highest gate for a Money in the Bank, the highest gate for a SmackDown. It's like they're really uh, on fire, especially compared to where they were just a few years ago, right? Absolutely, it's good. It's actually it's good to see. I like it. I'm happy. Yeah, and I think really, obviously, we have Roman Reigns to thank for the lion's share of yes. WWE's newfound popularity. But I think, like, with all this criticism right now of Vince McMahon is back and he's, you know, remotely ripping up the script and all this stuff, it's like, I'm sure that's happening. But you have to notice the difference between, like, Raw used to be a laughably bad TV show towards the, the, the end of the Vince McMahon in charge of every single thing time right before yep. the Vince McMahon scandal whenever when they tried to oust him and, and really couldn't so around that time this show raw was literally not cohesive it was just not a cohesive television show it was random segments that you couldn't even follow week to week if you just followed those segments right it was people coming out canceling matches the show made no sense there was no unity throughout the beginning and the end it was just it was mostly nonsense right and so it just was turning people off. And that is one thing that has drastically changed in the Triple H era is he's the one, generally speaking, picking the talent. Obviously, there's been some notable matches like Brock Lesnar and Omos where Vince McMahon was clearly 
his fingerprints, right, were all over it. Yeah. Um, but just in general, with what we have going on now in WWE, both shows are just much more logical wrestling shows, even when they have segments, you know, like Grayson Waller or whatever. <laughs> But, yeah, that is something that is a marked difference from the Vince McMahon, like, maniacal, obsessive, compulsive show that lacked any cohesion and mostly no entertainment value, right? Except for a few segments here and there with with our faves, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's okay. I think it's it's not okay that he gets to remotely rip up the scripts and stuff. Uh, I think, but it's okay if he's not like producing the show, you know, I think triple H or whoever's doing the, the work on raw, especially um, knows how to get it to flow, you know, and that's, that's almost more important because you're always going to get your, your Brock Lesnar's and Omas's or whatever. But if the show is kind of flowing, you can kind of like skip over that or just, it kind of is okay. Cause the next thing will come on, you'll be excited when it's just random segments splashed together. Everything is just such, just a drag. Yeah, when what matters the most is what how we refer to an ambulance and yeah. whether or not someone it's like it was just these weird idiosyncrasies and these weird little ticks that Vince McMahon has that were just really ruining the show. And overall that is gone completely. So there's going to be times where it's like okay, we can guess who chose this ending to a match, but it's yep. just I feel like Vince is much less in control than in the past, which is good. I feel like the force is there behind the scenes they may say whatever they 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 may say what they say in interviews but people are mostly trying to work to limit vince mcmahon's if they can't limit his power just limit his actual influence right yeah like what happened uh to avoid what happened with this rumor on raw where there was the alleged argument which doesn't seem like it was anything big but we could talk about it for a second. The fact that the the ending of Raw was changed with the Judgment Day and Seth Rollins and Sammy uh, Sammy Zayn and yeah. Kevin Owens and all these people, and they ended up having an argument backstage. And it doesn't really seem like it was that big of a deal, but it seems like uh, the story, the the script getting changed, can lead to stuff like that happening. Yeah. Definitely, yep, in the confusion. But that doesn't happen as often, like you said, since Vince hasn't been completely 100% involved. So that's that's been good. And there have been the rumors that talent is still unhappy. Like, who would want to work in that environment, right? Where you're, like, let's say you're, you're in this yeah. announced match. The match just disappears, you know, and you find out when you find out, whether it's right then and there or a couple hours earlier. Like, Bailey, that happened to, she was tweeting something, trying to make sense of it with her match, like, disappearing. But... But yeah, so this, there's still frustration. But I'm just saying the show overall, um, it's it's coming out less in the in the product, right? Definitely. Yeah. So, but yeah, so let's get to this bloodline saga. We are at the stage where the Usos strike back. Yeah, it's very good. So, the Usos beat Roman Reigns. I I didn't predict like exactly that that would happen, but I did definitely say that it was. The, the, there was a moment there to, to pin Roman, to have Jey Uso pin Roman, and they did it. I was I was surprised. Yeah. I don't think it was a bad thing at all. I think, like I said before, Roman's not defending the title anyway, so this is not hurting him any more than that, right? But yeah, it was very uh, a dramatic ending to Money in the Bank. The Usos finally getting the win on Roman Reigns, getting the pin on Roman Reigns specifically. Yeah. And then the following SmackDown, last week's SmackDown, we have got to talk about this tribal court. This was another incredible, I mean, it was long, but it was just another chapter of the saga here. And uh, yeah, I was, I'm watching this and I was literally like, Roman Reigns, when he starts talking about how, so, so well, let's just go back to the beginning. So the Usos come out and they're bragging about how they beat Roman Reigns, how long it has been since he was beaten, but then he was beaten by them, right? So, yeah, great moment for the Usos, right? They get to gloat. They beat yep. Roman Reigns. Who who else? Who is bigger in WWE for them to beat? This is like Road Warrior status yes. for the Usos, right? Like, they are the the people to beat now in WWE. Crazy. So, or, oh, they're up there, right? In this Absolutely. moment. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, 
good on them. And then they bring out Roman for tribal court. Apparently, it's, it's time for, uh, it's kind of like wrestler's court, but it's only only the Anoa'i tribe. Yes. So, so uh, Roman comes out, and they play this uh, video of Roman just being an a-hole. And I thought it was great. And then the, what, what I, the first thing I thought was funny was Roman's, like, reacting to this negatively. Like, I thought this was, like, a supercut of everything you would think Roman is trying to be. But he's, like, acknowledging. He's, like, that's not me. You, you made me act that way. Yeah. And I thought that was funny. It's, like, wait a sec. You don't, you're, you're, you're trying to dominate everybody, like, every second you're on screen. You know, that's all they showed you was what you've been doing. But, of course, he's, like, that's not me. And he's all conflicted. And then the tribal chief. Right. Who, as you just saw in this clip, he's been dominating his cousins, trying to control his family, trying to control his whole world. Right. And now he's like, just doesn't care anymore. Now he's like, I don't I don't need this. Like, you don't need this. You're the one who set this whole thing up. Like, you're the one who's been establishing this entire like empire. And now you're just saying, imagine like Darth Vader. I don't need this. It's like, you're going to blow up my Death Star. I don't need this. But yeah, so that's what Roman was basically saying. He's saying like, he's got five kids. Apparently, he's taking care of the Usos' kids too. Which uh, there's like a vague like, well, the tribal elders they sent me that we set up this tribe to so I could take care of everybody, and I'm the chief, and I'm taking care of your kids. And it's like it's weird. Yeah, that part's weird. But it's just it's just funny how they can like just like I don't know. And Roman lets us know he's got five kids. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, he does. So shoot, he's got five kids with his wife. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no one, that's what he's doing all the time. He's out hanging out with his kids, so good for him. Yeah, that's why he can't be on every show. I get it. You know, it's like, it, it, instead of being like the Ric Flair and the like Jake Roberts, all these guys being like crying in their Hall of Fame speech about how they were a terrible dad, Roman's going to be like in his Hall of Fame speech, he's going to be like, no, I was a great dad. Like I was with my kids all the time. I was in the pool. Look at my Instagram. We were having a great time. It's like, <laughs> it, it was the people watching the show that weren't having a great time. No. But yes, Roman Reigns and his five kids, he can't take care of the Usos kids anymore. I don't know, you know, whatever. They can't go swimming today. You know, it's like, too, there's too many mouths to feed here at lunch. That's right. Not enough Lunchables here to go around. No, but uh, it, it was just funny. Roman's like, I don't need all this. And it's like, for three years, you've been like pulling all this in closer to you. I just thought that was funny. So then, yes, but the, 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 the ruse set by Roman was that he doesn't need all this and he doesn't need this stress. And, uh, Jay can just be the tribal chief now, you know, you can have it. And he's like, he's crying, which I thought was great. Right. First oh, of so all, good. Roman Reigns is another Hobbs and Shaw reference. Roman Reigns is in this movie, Hobbs and Shaw. Yes. Doesn't have a speaking line. I didn't, I don't think he had one speaking line besides like, ah, you're right. He didn't. Yeah. That's, yeah. Like what the heck? Yeah. I don't know. I, I assumed he would. That was before they knew his range. All right. Yeah. Now we do. He can cry on command, but so yeah, he was crying, you know, which I thought was funny. And then he, he puts like the lay that he like, I literally didn't think, you know, I, I always think like it's going to stop right before the thing happens. So he's like, you could be the tribal chief. And I'm like, what? This doesn't make what are his motivations? This doesn't make any sense. He the only thing he's cared about is being the tribal chief. And then he puts the actual lay on Jay Uso, and I'm like, what is happening right now? Like even Jay Uso was like, wow, yeah. this is a big deal, you know. So, so he puts the the lay on Jay Uso, but then he low blows him. And then, you know, the beatdown commences. He and Solo beat down the Usos and uh, get out of there. And this was like a 40-minute, or, yeah, I don't know, first 40 minutes of SmackDown, right? But that's all right. Crazy. I don't know when the last time they've done something like that. And it was actually, like, they're doing this as, like, a good thing. Like, we don't want to take these guys off screen, you know? But... But yeah, so they open the show with that. Then they close the show with more Bloodline. This is like the Bloodline show. You know? Hey. You know where the bread's buttered? I'm okay with it. Yeah, so at the end of the show, Roman comes back out, you know, after the chaos earlier. And then gets attacked by Jey Uso, who basically challenges him. 
And uh, I thought Jey Uso looked like a badass here and a legit contender. Yes. For the universal title. I want him to win so bad. I know it's not going to happen, but I need it. I love those moments where the guy, like the challenger guy, like grabs the belt, you know, because you're not always going to win it, you know. But it's just like you that's that first moment you get where everybody gets to see you with the belt. So it's like, how do you look with the belt? Do you look like somebody who we could see as a champion or do you look like you should put that down because it's not yours? You know, and I thought Jey Uso looked great with the belt, like just holding the belt like so close, you know. Yeah, I I bought it. I, I'm going to be watching the match at SummerSlam. At like a, I'm a little child, like I'm gonna be like every near fall, I'm gonna be hoping that Jey Uso wins, and I, even though I know I don't think he's gonna win, I'm pretty sure 99 percent that he's not gonna win. It's gonna be a great match. I'm gonna be so involved. I want Jay to win. I don't think he's gonna win. Yeah, I don't think so either. No, I don't think he's gonna win. I think it'll just be the end of a great story. I mean, well, so I do think it'll be the end of a great story with Roman and the Bloodline. I think it's probably time for for Roman to to just do something with someone other than his cousins. Yeah. You know, not that it's not great, but yeah. So Jay Uso, um, the main event of SummerSlam WWE universal championship, Roman reigns versus Jay Uso. Pretty good. Absolutely. So, so now let's get into the SummerSlam card. The SummerSlam card is starting to take shape. So let's, Take a look at the matchups, the rumored matchups. Like I mentioned, we have Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. We also have another encounter between the Beast Brock Lesnar and the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. So this one was kind of expected, the Cody and Brock matchup. They're not really done there, you know. Hey, but... That's another great card or match on the card. It's it's looking good. Yeah, and uh, we're getting this is an interesting one for SummerSlam. Well, I mean, I actually don't think it's official yet, but I really don't see where else they would do this. Is Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler? Oh yeah, in a I know. match and a grudge match. Apparently, these two friends are no longer friends. Shayna Baszler turned on Ronda Rousey in the most awkward, random way possible. I've never seen a turn in a match as awkward and random as that. Just, well, like, not even, like, when they're standing there and someone turns around and it's just literally, like, one second you're doing one thing, now you're beating up your friend. Yeah, well, hey, you know what? I know it was awkward to get there, but I'm happy for it. And if Shayna can be let old, if she, I, I hope Shayna dominates the match. She would be like over, <laughs> like Rover, if that happened. Just like a one-sided beatdown, like just Shayna like yeah. comes in, doesn't sell anything, and just chokes Ronda out and drops her. Yeah, that I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> but man, would that be great? Just like what? Who's next? You know? Exactly. Oh, that'd be so good. Yeah, that would be great. It's not gonna I happen. I mean, they, they are friends though. Maybe Ronda let that happen. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it would be an issue with Ronda if Shayna were to win. And plus, the rumor is is Ronda is uh is leaving WWE. So I would think at that point, you know, it's time to uh, pay back the business here. I think so. And, and get, give the win to Shayna Baszler. Just a random match on such a, a ridiculously stacked SummerSlam card. Well, in a way it's stacked with like the title matches and the amount of people that yeah. they want to put on it. Just of all the talent, it's just like Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, which I get it. Ronda is, if she's leaving WWE, if she's, going on a giant break or something like that um that's fine gunther versus drew mcintyre Ooh. meat tenderizers that's it that's all this is oh my god i feel bad for people's uh blood vessels here on their chests oh it's gonna be yeah that's gonna be wild i mean D drew mcintyre knows how to chop the shit out of people you know like that match what was that match did the three-way match where was that? That was a clash. Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Clash of the Castle. It was, no, uh, no, it wasn't. That three-way match with Gunther and Sheamus yeah. and Drew McIntyre. Was it WrestleMania? No. I don't know. It. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was WrestleMania, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was. These guys it just drew. Mac there was a moment where Drew McIntyre is just beating everyone in sight. Like, jeez. And, yes, going up against just Drew and Gunta. 
Yeah. It's going to be a violent clash. And chops yeah. are not banned in WWE. So. That's right. Listen, you just said all of these matches so far, and I literally want to see every one. I'm very, I want every match. WWE Women's Championship. Uh, we're working towards here pretty much a triple threat match. The champ, Asuka, defending against Charlotte Flair and Bianca. So to me, this is the three best female wrestlers, WWE, women wrestlers WWE has, I think. I, I mean, EO Sky, throw EO Sky in there, and then those are the best, in my opinion, on the roster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another one. That's it's gonna be. Oh man, what a. This is shaping up to be pretty a pretty great card. Like you know how sometimes it's like one or two matches that are just like blah. But this like everything is just banger here. They're really setting this up. Rhea yeah. Ripley, Rhea oh. Ripley, and Raquel Rodriguez. Probably, I think. It's fine with me. Or Rhea Ripley, really. Rhea Ripley at this point is just her own. Like just whatever her match is, she's like the female Brock Lesnar. To a certain degree, where it's yep. just like, what's going to be the Rhea Ripley match? You know? Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. At yeah, it point. really is. Yep. There's very few people in WWE more popular than Rhea Ripley. You know? Deservingly so. Yeah, I'm glad. Becky Lynch and Trish going to have a match. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be good. Um, no Edge match. That's yet. Don't see Edge. Edge who wrestled Grayson Waller recently. Your favorite. Is that really the, is that really all they got for matches? Oh no no no! We have. How could we forget? I can't believe you almost forgot. Logan Paul and Ricochet at SummerSlam. This is a. Uh, this is going to be good. Oh, I'm very excited. I, and you know what? They actually set this up at the Royal Rumble when they did that cool spot together. And that's literally all I asked for in the Royal Rumble. Even though it wasn't like specifically, I think, to set up this match this far. It was like they, they interacted at the Royal Rumble and now they're having a match. It's great. Well, and so they, they had the moment in the Rumble match and then they yeah. also had the Money in the Bank of course. spot where they were supposed to do a shooting star press. They basically just did a shooting star press Logan Paul's head. Yes. You know? Um, because basically, I mean, credit to Logan Paul because that mo and just this is how much of like a genius Ricochet is with this stuff. Like he's so underrated as far as his technical ability, um, with the ability to be like hung up in the ropes with such a like inexperienced person in Logan Paul and just balance both of them. I'm not saying Logan Paul didn't like help the situation, but yeah. it's not like Logan Paul has been on those like ropes springboarding a hundred times, you know? So when things start to go south, Ricochet still just pulls off the Spanish fly. Did I say a shooting star press Logan Paul's head? Spanish fly onto Logan Paul's head. And, uh, and yeah, they, they, they saved it. I guess they saved it and they landed on Logan Paul's head. Basically he was fine, I guess. But yeah, that was a weird spot in the money in the bank match where they went through a table and almost, it almost they just almost just fell. It was it was pretty scary, but I mean yeah, you're right. Ricochet is very good, and I like that Ricochet is getting the celebrity match, which means that someone actually likes him now. It's pro it's Triple H, obviously. Oh, you don't think it's Vince McMahon pulling for uh, Ricochet, uh, the one no, and only Ricochet? So. Because this is I would I mean I know they're both kind of like high flying guys, so Logan Paul, but I mean. It's so nice to have Ricochet in a high-profile match. Yes. Deserving. So deserving. Oh, absolutely. He's just put up with so much, like, the two-second Brock Lesnar squash or whatever. And, like, yep. it's just he would get these whenever Triple H is, like, you know, like when he had his debut in the main roster, obviously Simon NXT is very well-featured. And then it's just, like, every other great talent, Vince McMahon decides to probably, like, throw you in the trash. And glad to see that Ricochet is you know, in such a high profile spot here against Logan Paul. And really what I think is there's a lot of guys like Ricochet, but you know, his, his, his catchphrase and his theme song is the one and only, and there really is one and only Ricochet. So 
he's definitely deserving of of being like really one of the, like in the top matches like he just hasn't been pushed properly and i think logan paul is going to bring all of his fans who maybe don't know guys like ricochet and really elevate ricochet i think and to show people the talent that is already there basically yeah and i think yeah exactly this will be like one of the only well maybe not the only but there has been matches before with celebrities that actually do that and i think this might be one you're right because ricochet has the talent and there's gonna be a lot of eyes on him so it's very exciting don't know what's going on with la Knight. i really think he should be in a uh in a match I think uh, he's gotta be seth rollins the world heavyweight champion Probably just going to run it back with Finn Balor, which is not a bad match, you know? Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe. I that's know. probably, the, I feel like that's going to be the money in the bank cashing. So, so you think, yeah, I mean, there's that's, that's definitely a thing they could do because the Judgment Day is on thin ice right now. They're like the yep. hottest act, one of the hottest acts in WWE, but they're not taking the bloodline route here. This ain't going to be a three-year uh, yeah. breakup with the Judgment Day. They are going to be um, coming to blows soon some in some way, shape, or fashion. Um, but yeah, you got Senior Money in the Bank, Damian Priest, and uh, Senior Balor. And yeah, so do you think that Damian Priest would say, I'm adding myself to the match, like either, you know, maybe like right when the match is about to start, like the guys are in the ring, and then so that way it's not the typical cash in where he's saying, I'm cashing in like to put myself in the match? I was actually thinking that he was just going to like kind of sneak out, but I think, yeah, maybe the way they do it is that he says he's going to be in the match, but he plays it like, I'm going to help you, Finn, and then he doesn't. You know, that's the way it goes, and that's how they break up. I don't know. Yeah, or do you think it's like maybe in the middle of the match where it's not that moment where the champion is down and out and he comes out, you know, where it's kind of like I'm going to f- make it a triple threat, you know? I like that idea, yeah. Just to spice it up, yeah. But because conversely, if he were to come out at the end, let's say, right, we're talking about Damian Priest potentially cashing in money in the bank at SummerSlam. If he were to come out at the end of that match, well, it would only make sense if Finn Balor was the champion. I agree with that too, yes. Right? Because it's like, okay, cool. So your friend lost, and now you're going to run out and maybe beat Seth Rollins. It really would have only have an impact if Finn Balor had just won, and now out comes Damian Priest, right? I and mean, that's it yeah, for the Judgment yeah, Day. Yeah, it, make, it makes sense for me too. I think that should happen, and then... Balor would lose, and then again he only held that title a title for like a tiny amount of time. Last time it was injury, this time it's his cash in, and then they just then they feud for a while. Hmm. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I I don't think they should do that though. I think that they should just have him keep it for a while. Yeah, that's okay too. I I, I know to keep keeping it longer kind of sets up the uh, anticipation, so I I get it. So yeah, so I I don't know how they're gonna. I don't know how they're going to not have a lot of matches on, on SummerSlam, right? Because SummerSlam, it's like yeah. they, now they have the two world titles. They're, they're, they're making people care about more of the roster. They're also using more celebrities, right? Yeah. You know, so we'll see uh, who, who else gets added here. But I think, uh, I think it's time for me to go enjoy some time with my friends. Can I enjoy some time with my friends? Can I enjoy some time with my friends? <laughs> Did you see that video? When he came out at the and he, when he when John Cena came out and interrupt or Grayson Waller interrupted John Cena yeah. at the end, John Cena goes, "Can I enjoy some time with my friends?" Yeah, and he just it was completely shoehorned in there. It made absolutely no sense, but everybody reacted to it. It was because there's this video, a TikTok of John Cena, and somebody walks up to him and they're like, "Oh my god, I did see that!" Hey, he's like, "Hey, can you do the you can't see me?" Yep. And John Cena just looks over and goes, "Can I enjoy some time with my friends?" Right, he was at dinner, and it was kind of like, yeah, I, yeah. I actually know that video. Yeah, yeah, and he looks over, it's kind of like, yeah, on the wall. <laughs> so, so, like, everybody saw that TikTok, and then in the ring, it just at the end at the end of the segment, he just finds a way to shoehorn the line in against Grayson Waller. Can I enjoy some time with my friends? Because John Cena is top tier. I can't, what can I say? He knows what he's doing. Yeah. So, yeah, so that about does it for this episode of Watch Wrestling with Mike Wellman. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for 
tuning in and thank you for subscribing because I know after listening to this episode, you're going to be kind, like, and subscribe. Check us out on social media. Watch Wrestling Pod on YouTube. Watch Wrestling Pod on Facebook. At W Wrestling Pod on Twitter. Who knows? We might start an Instagram. We might start a Threads. We'll see how much uh, Elon Musk pisses us off in the next uh, week or two here. But, yeah, like I said, that about does it for this episode. And what does this button do?